And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. They want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Malcolm Jenkins up to make the stop. A look now at the defensive starters for Philadelphia. They played extremely well last week in the win over Atlanta. I just consider myself fortunate that I'm not in charge of the offensive line. They gave them <laughs> seven sacks last week. And if things don't improve in this game, the head coach isn't going to be looking at the offensive line. He's going to be looking at the offensive line coach. And that's when things get dicey. now Fitzpatrick looking for Evans and it's intercepted picked off by Robbie McLeod and he'll bring this one back to the 29 so that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception ordinarily we look at the offense and say what's going on with your scheme maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit they've got them frustrated right now the Boise State alone, Jay Ajayi. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. There are the numbers last week for Jay Ajayi. 14 carries, 78 yards, and a touchdown. That's a good start to the season. They got the win, and they were able to establish a good running game. Nothing that just blew people away, but a nice solid base to get things started. And they expect that to get tuned up and get better as the season moves on. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. False start, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. They were looking good on second down, but now they're backed up five yards by the false start, and it's second and eight. From the gun, it's Wins. The attempt on the dive, and he has it. What a catch. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. When you're a player of his stature, you don't just circle the games on your team's calendar. You circle, circle the, the Pro Bowl? <laughs> without a doubt. That's a game that you just figure you're going to be in each and every year. And it's because of catches like that. That's why he goes. Try and run for it on first and goal. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? And he is not going to get in as the big body stop him at the one. They're held again, and do we have a goal line stand brewing? It's third and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. What's that throw? And this has caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Dallas Goddard, his first NFL reception, goes for six. And the Eagles had six to their lead. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. 
That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Elliott good on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Five plays there on that drive. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Elliott now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. Fitzpatrick now over the middle, and it's incomplete. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, right there on the coverage. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think it. you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. Hey, move, 45. On third down, Fitzpatrick, but leading the pressure right. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. That makes him now 0 for 2 here in the first quarter on third down conversions. And now they'll look to their defense because they need them to step up so they don't fall further behind here in the early going. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. And out now come the Eagles. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. To throw, it's Wentz. It's over the middle. And they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And a reception made by Alshon Jeffrey. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe needs some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Wentz is going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's a perfect 6-for-6 six six here to start the ball again. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes it down to 40 with a pickup of 4. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. This is a Jai. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. 
but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of two, now third down. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading the play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Throwing now is Wentz. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. And yeah, Tampa Bay trots out there now. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. North of 100 yards, the two scores. And, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to the O-line. We talked a lot about him, but offensive line was good, too. They're obviously in sync with each other, whether it's zone blocking, power running game, no matter what, he understands how to read them and find the creases that they provide. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Now Fitzpatrick, complete, he finds Bray. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 15 yards through the air and a first down. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because when you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's worked for the defense early in this game. And now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. Now a second down throw for Fitzpatrick, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Bucks on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Set. Ready! Ready! Cut. Throwing Fitzpatrick. Out to the left there and complete to Howard. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. At the end of one, already 17-0 our score. We'll return to Tampa after this message. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. Here's Brian Anger now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. Jeffrey working 
his way back out there now to help lead this offense. He hasn't had his usual star-studded performance so far, but still the second quarter, and they're still up on the scoreboard. And sometimes even as a decoy, you can have a big impact on the game, and that's what we've seen thus far. They're still able to get it done. They found other ways. They haven't had to utilize him as a top priority just yet, but you know he's waiting and available. Yeah, now the question is, how will they utilize him here? First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. On second down, here's Wentz. Wentz has it left side. And down he'll go at the 25. That eagle first down there, Wentz to Ertz, and the names that end in TZ. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Wentz going to throw toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I was in George conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Now it's a giant. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, that one was over before it could get rolling. How about the D just knifing into the backfield and shutting that one down? They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. And this is a guy straight out of college. They're not going to try to groom for a year or two. They want him to produce right away. That's why they took him in the first round. They expect him to be a starter right away and a future All-Pro. So they don't have any time to wait for him to come along. They want him to play right now to help this team. They added a lot of talent to a roster that really needed an infusion of youth. They got a very good infusion of youth. And they didn't really reach to get anyone as well. They stuck to their draft philosophy, got the best players they could at the time they were drafting, and inserted them into their lineup. His position, and he's listed as a tight end, but he certainly doesn't run like one. And that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league. Those guys who can run, make plays after the catch, and gain that additional yardage. And using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little game. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now. And that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. They roll him with a giant. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Open man left side is Wallace complete. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet. Get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And all oh, the gamble fails. It's incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. Well, the element of surprise was there. All right, there's no doubt about it. For us, maybe. But not for the guys on defense. An incomplete pass on the fake field goal attempt. I guess, though, if you're trying to pick up the first in that spot, why not let your QB throw the ball, right? <laughs> you think that might be a better way to go? Instead of your kicker, yeah. Back. And 
Forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. Now Fitzpatrick, and incomplete there. A nice hit, jars the ball free, and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. He can run for it, and he will. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And he uncorks a beauty. Best of the day. Now Sproles. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Carson Wentz and the Eagles make their way out to the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead. And they feel really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Throwing his wins. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Wallace. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Now Wentz on the bootleg. Wide open receiver complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. Can't have enough good pass catching tight ends in the NFL. And the Eagles, they want to replenish their stock. They lost Trey Burton in the offseason. So they selected Dallas Goddard out of South Dakota State in the second round. And he is nothing but a big time pass catcher. What a great story because South Dakota State didn't offer him a scholarship out of high school. He walked on there. Yeah, so now Zach Ertz has a running mate at tight end. Now a play fake. Wentz. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense. And that fell harmlessly to the ground. The Eagles on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third down and 12. Shotgun now for Wentz. And down he goes. A bucket air sack. Noah Spence in there to get him for a loss of three. And it'll be fourth down. But that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks. They have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Adam Humphreys deep for Tampa Bay. And we check on the game going on over in New Orleans. And it's an early lead there for the Saints. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit, 
maybe featuring other people touching it for a while, and then you've got a chance to come back to it when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. There's still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. Second down, Fitzpatrick. Forced out to his left. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Tampa after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll send you across state to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have all the stats and all the scores from games going on during another busy Sunday in the National Football League. The Bucks on third down, just one for five to this point. This is third and four. Fitzpatrick. Flushed out right, on the run, he'll let this go deep right, and for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Malcolm Jenkins, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So that is three interceptions now in this first half, and you hate to ask the question, but yeah, let's be honest, we're thinking about it, do you need to go in a different direction next series? Potentially. We know that he's probably not going to be on the Pro Bowl ballot. That's not really his stature here. But he has been their starting quarterback for this game. So they've got to weigh things about who's behind him. Do they think he can snap it back into gear? Maybe change up the play calling to help him out a little bit. Carson Wentz, along with his offense, heading back out there for their next possession. They've got the lead. He's a big reason why. Looking sharp so far. And as we travel around the league, we see quarterbacks get it done in a variety of ways. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Quan Alexander in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. Here's a Johnny. And he'll go down for a loss inside his own five at the four. He lost two there, and it's third down. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume. Oh, they're on him too quickly back there, and it's blocked. It's picked up, and this is a live ball, remember. And it's a Buccaneers touchdown. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, heading into the locker room? This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Extra point good by Catanzaro, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. So the lead back down to 10 as things get a little more interesting, and the kick is away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. A chance for us now to discuss Jay Ajayi. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates, they want to get one of those, too, because they want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows, they're actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way they won't go away from the running game. They'll be hoping to pop one, break one here this go around. Yeah, 
So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit, but first it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. We'll start at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, an NFC South matchup between Atlanta and Carolina. And that one finds the Falcons out in front. Calvin Ridley, a touchdown reception. From there, we head up to MetLife Stadium to check on the Jets. And in that one, it's the visiting Dolphins who are out in front. Danny Amendola, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get down to the Bayou. Check on the Saints at home at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And they've got the lead in their ball game over the visiting Cleveland Browns. A touchdown there for Alvin Kamara. In the game you're watching, it's a once again healthy Carson Wentz that's led the way in the first half. His guys lead it by 10. We send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Now we'll get a stoppage here as it appears we've got an eagle slow to get up. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. The Eagles on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and nine. Working from the gun, Wentz. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Brent Grimes. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. So far, this has to feel like a horrible dream for him. He's thrown more completions to the other team than he has to his three interceptions. Now this will test him mentally. And this is going to test his mettle and test his fortitude because once you've thrown those three, you start to feel sorry for yourself. But you can't do that. There's more football to be played talking with Jason Garrett, the coach of the Cowboys, and he mentioned at one point Tony Romo threw five interceptions in a game, but it turned out to be one of the better games he played because he rallied down the stretch and took them to victory. Fitzpatrick now on second down. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. And they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Four down, four down. They go play action here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon Graham. 
in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> the sack they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Four down, four down. They'll run it now out of the gun finding room to the 20 and finally taken down at the 15. Offense on third down tonight, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. They'll try to throw here, Fitzpatrick. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Third and long, Fitzpatrick following the sack. What can he and the gang come up with? Hey, 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 hey. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's Carson Wentz now with the rest of his offensive unit heading onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown. Blitz coming and down he goes. Levante David coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. 
On third and long, it's Wins. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Just a net of 34 there following a punt of 44 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. To throw on second down, Fitzpatrick. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick, and it's third down. The frustration is definitely setting in because they've thrown it to him over and over, unable to come up with a catch thus far. I think he knew he would have his challenges against his secondary. I don't think he saw a goose egg at this point in the game. The Bucks on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and nine. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Well, this is caught by Jackson. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this. When he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And they'll go on the ground. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Second and one, if people want to run the football, this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. And they'll run it here. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Pardon, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Now a play fake here on first down. He'll buy some time right. And that is incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Now Rodgers. 
And he'll get this one down to about the 17. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. The Bucks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is third and seven. Fitzpatrick now. They'll roll him out, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Jordan Hicks in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stack sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack, but he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, Parker, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here's Wentz to throw. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, and it's second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Noah Spence in on the stop. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. The Eagles on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's wins. And that is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let it just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The Eagles send out their punter now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. Taken in at the 11. Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way we, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Looking to throw on second down. Fitzpatrick, quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22 yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. 
Fitzpatrick from the gun on third down. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there, keeps the sticks moving. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven, it's first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. To throw on second down, Fitzpatrick. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball. But he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. Yes, yeah, several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown. And frankly, that should have been another pick right there. Complete. He finds Brady. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a big 32-yard play on third. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Now a second down throw for Fitzpatrick. And his throw is incomplete. It was the veteran safety Malcolm Jenkins who got a hand in there to disrupt it. This has been a really nice day for the defense. They've made it so difficult to find open receivers because they're able to squeeze the passing lanes down. A lot of what they're doing is communicating. Receivers in one area, receivers in another area. They're almost what they call passing them off from one defender to the next, even in zone defenses, and making it very hard to find an open spot for the quarterback to deliver the ball. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Nigel Bradham brings him down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Looking to throw on second down. Fitzpatrick, and the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide-open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've had them in check on the scoreboard. Now Fitzpatrick. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. But where have we seen this before? This might be shades of Super Bowl 52. Charles, Eagles up by a score in the fourth quarter, needing to run some clock. Yeah, and they don't need to take that much off here. And think about it this way. 
different quarterback under center than the one you're thinking about. They had Nick Foles under center, Super Bowl 52 here, Carson Wentz. But in Super Bowl 52, they took over seven minutes off the clock. They certainly did, and they really ground it down and stuck it in the end zone. Wentz to throw on second down. Hurts over the middle. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From the gun on third down, Wentz. And this is going to be incomplete. Ryan Smith right there defensively. So it looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And this will be taken at the 13. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. And the interception that ended their previous drive, that might be one we look back on and say that was the turning point of this game. Hey, partner, guess what? There's still time for a few more turning points in this ball game. They're only one score down. Yeah, true. I mean, we could have some twists and turns. Stay tuned. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. What an advantage having a elite guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Hey, move, 45. To throw on second down, Fitzpatrick. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The intended receiver that time, Adam Humphreys. And it's third down. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. Wentz now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. A uh, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Uh, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Now wins. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. And the kick by Elliott is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. 
Well, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Looking to throw on second down. Fitzpatrick. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Fletcher Cox in there to get him. His second sack now of the afternoon. Here's Fitzpatrick. He gets it to Humphreys. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. And they'll go on the ground. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Back to throw. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. He'll look to throw. Throw for his running back, and he's got him complete. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. Back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll look to throw. And he comes back with one complete. Back to throw. That's complete. Middle of the field to Humphreys. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Fitzpatrick. And Boyd has it over the middle. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. 
Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. they got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. Here's Fitzpatrick. Flush to his right. He may try and run for this. When in doubt, do it yourself as he keeps it for three and a first down. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first, and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movements. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call a flatliner. Level with everything he does and read the clock, feel it in the pocket, and go at the appropriate time. Fitzpatrick to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Nigel Bradham, the linebacker, right there on the coverage. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early, and then you kind of relax a little bit, to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Now Fitzpatrick. Steps away to his left. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As he'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Fitzpatrick on third and two. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with a football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number. Can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? Desperation time. Fitzpatrick on fourth down. <laughs> the interception woes. They just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks at this point.